Hey guys, so this episode I'm going to react be reacting to the third episode of uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, The Southern Air Temple. I know this is a sadder episode, so, uh, yeah. Water. Earth. Fire. Air. Long ago. So, just right off, I was paying attention to the credits. I was wondering if this would show, like, the past avatars that we're eventually going to meet. But it looks like they might just be, um, char characters from this show, um, doing all the different, like, elements in the opening scene. So, I'm kind of curious to see if we're going to see Kiyoshi or something like that, so... Okay, so they are going to try to master water first. Wake up, Saga! Air Temple, here we come! Sleep now. Temple later. <sighs> Me, when I have to go on a car trip. There's a prickle snake in your sleeping bag! Honestly, can't we just sleep on our way? You don't understand, Katara. The only way to get to an airbender temple is on a flying bison. And I doubt the Fire Nation has any flying bison. Right, Appa? So, what would make, you know, why would it, the only way they were able to get to the Air Temple be by bison? Do they have, like, no actual physical roads leading up to it? I'm wondering if they, Fire Nation, created their own, like, you know, planes or whatever, yet. Who's that? Monkey Atso. The greatest airbender in the world. He taught me everything I know. But the true secret is in the gooey center. <laughs> hmm. My ancient cake making technique isn't the only thing on your mind, is it, Anne? Maybe the monks made a mistake. The only mistake they made was telling you before you turned 16. One, two, three. <laughs> we see why he loved him so much because he had that childlike nature as well. So a 12-year-old boy bested you and your firebenders. You're more pathetic than I thought. He's literally the avatar did shit. Statues? That's it? Who are all these people? I'm not sure. But it feels like I know them somehow. All the past avatars. Firebender, nobody make a sound. You're making a sound? Shh. I know who this is. Lemur! Dinner. Don't listen to him. Wait, come back! I want to eat you! <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, pretty dark for a kid's show. Hey, Aang, you find my dinner yet? Mm. Aang, I wasn't really gonna eat the lemur, okay? Oh, man. So, so far, the only thing that activates his avatar state is physical threat to himself and, you know, I guess, Aang. anger. <laughs> Send word to the Fire Lord. So this is the only time they, like, activate. So, the first time it happened, did that not do anything, or did he have to be here in this cavern and activate all the other, like, statues or whatever to activate the ones in the, all the different nations? I.e., they just need to let everyone know that the Avatar is alive. Do it! <laughs> That's it. Your father raised a coward. Next time you get in my way, I promise I won't hold back. Literally just lost and so you're gonna try to play the whole oh your coward card. Mm 
Oh. You're gonna eat him, and but you got him some food. Guess that's uh, possible just <laughs> giving him something else to focus on instead of trying to eat him, I guess. Okay, so that was the third episode, the Southern Air Temple. So we see that the, you know, um, Aang is the last of the airbenders. Um, and we also, I think, we get a little bit more about Zuko, you know, since he's kind of the technically big villain somewhat of the show. Um, we see his, a little bit of his backstory and why he's doing what he's doing. And so, well, it's a little, it was a little bit more serious, I think, than the previous two episodes. But it is going on its way to slowly developing the story in the series. So. So yeah, so that was my reaction to this episode, um, so uh, keep an eye out for the next episode.